If you're trying to play in a new gaming PC build and maybe you have some extra Christmas money or maybe you just got that end of the year bonus from work, then I 100% got you covered because I'm going to show you exactly how to buy and build a $500, $750, and $1,000 gaming PC. But before we get started, there's some very important disclaimers that we have to go over with. We're going to get serious real quick, but then we'll get into the builds. First, we have the pricing disclaimer, and you just have to realize that the pricing is not going to be the exact same whenever you're watching this video. And honestly, the price is going to be different even an hour from now when I'm recording this video. Now, I did try to avoid all of the crazy Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals so you can repeat these builds throughout the entire month of December. But again, just don't be mad at me if the pricing is a little different. Secondly, these build guides are a combination of price to performance and aesthetics. These are not 100% tuned for just price to performance, but rather, you guys know me, I like to sacrifice a little bit of the performance budget so I can make the PC that sits on my desk every single day look pretty nice. That's just how I roll. And finally, the only only reason why we're not including a $1,500 build guide is because I'm actually making a dedicated video of that price point where I'm actually building the PC. Make sure you stay tuned for the channel because that's going to go live next week. And also one more thing, no matter what your budget is for your next gaming PC build, get 100% got to make sure you activate Windows and our sponsor can definitely help us out with that. Real quickly, I just wanted to remind you guys that today's build was indeed activated with Windows like all my other PC builds and flips and I personally use GBG Mall which is also the sponsor of today's video. To celebrate their mid-year promotion for 2022, they're actually bumping up our normal 18% off discount up to 25% off, and that gets Windows keys and everything else down to some really affordable prices. They also have other great products on other software like Office 2021, and even some game keys from platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating that Windows 10 on your computer is super simple to do. The entire process of buying and activating takes like five minutes total, so make sure you click that first link down in the description and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18 for 25% off. Jumping straight into our $500 build, I somehow managed to squeeze in the Intel i3-12100F and I'm actually so happy that we could do this. The 12th gen series is now a generation behind these days, but for $105, this is a screaming fast budget CPU and the price of motherboards for them is actually quite cheap these days. Speaking of which, this is the ASRock B660M HDV and this is simply the cheapest micro ATX motherboard with the B660 chipset that I could find. This is a very cheap motherboard with zero overclocking potential and only two RAM slots, but these are the compromises we have to make with a $500 brand new gaming PC that has a dedicated GPU. Before getting to that GPU, I just wanted to say that this motherboard would indeed be the number one place that I would upgrade for this $500 build. Now, realistically, you probably should just spend a few extra dollars over your $500 budget to get a better motherboard right away. But for the purposes of this video, I tried to keep the price as close to my target price range as possible, but you probably just want to get a better motherboard. Back to the GPU though, this here is the Asus Dual OC RX 6500 XT, and believe it or not, this would actually make for a very capable gaming PC. Keep in mind, I'm saying gaming PC, not content creation PC, not streaming PC, purely just a gaming PC. We all already know about some of the unfortunate drawbacks of the 6500 XT, but for a pure gaming build that's brand new, this is the best option that you can get. I tried to squeeze in an RX 6600, which would be much better, but it's just not happening brand new right now. For my personal opinion, I would rather spend a few extra dollars, go a little bit over budget, like I just said, and maybe buy a used graphics card with a little bit better price to performance, but for a $500 brand new gaming PC using only new components, which is the purpose of this video, the 6500 XT is pretty much as good as it gets. And one more thing to remember though, is that since we are using the 12100F, we will not actually be bottlenecked by PCIe Gen 3, so we'll at least be able to take full advantage of the 6500 XT. And honestly, for $120 brand new, this isn't a terrible price to performance anyway. Back to the rest of the parts list though, for RAM, we're using the YOLO 2x8 gigabyte all black kit that's clocked at 3000 megahertz for $42, that's some serious value. Same thing with the Crucial P3, this is a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive, but it's actually faster than our normal ultra budget drives like the Patriot P310 and Team Group MP33. So this is pretty solid at just 33 bucks. Next up, we have the power supply and this is the XPG Pylon 450 watt. Now this is a tier C unit, mind you, but it's actually one of the better ones and it's a very reliable PSU. It's also 80 plus bronze certified and for $40, it's hard to beat right now. After that, we have the CPU cooler and I just can't go with anything other than the Thermaltake UX 200 SE ARGB right now. It not only looks great for 30 bucks and it'll easily keep the 12100F super chilly, but it's also a super easy installation process. 
Finally, all of these components will be inside the Deepcool Matrix 40, which is simply just a clean all black micro ATX case, but feel free to go with whatever case you personally prefer around this price point. Here's what the entire parts list is looking like, and we actually managed to stay completely under the $500 build total, and this would end up looking really nice in like a stealthed out black build with some solid performance. Now, if you are trying to tweak it for a little bit more gaming performance, you probably could drop the 12100F down to a 10100F, get a cheaper motherboard, and then you might have a little bit extra money to go up to that RX 6600. It all depends on the current pricing, but let's move on to our $750 build now. Starting with the CPU, here I naturally bumped up a bit from the 12100F to the 12400F, and I'm also going with a slightly better ASRock B660M Pro RS motherboard, which gives us some more upgrade potential. For RAM, I'm going with my tried and tested Glowway White Kit because this will be an all white and RGB build that'll look super sick. And for $42, you just can't beat this two by eight gigabyte kit that's also clocked at 3200 megahertz. A little bit of a memory upgrade from the $500 PC as well. Speaking of upgrades, the SSD does not get upgraded as I use the exact same 500 gigabyte Crucial P3, but our power supply got a little bit more wattage with the Thermaltake Tough Power GX2 that's now 600 watts. This again is just a tier C unit, but you can get away with that with a $750 build. And this is actually one of the better tier C models. It'll be perfectly fine for our build today. Now for the massive upgrade, I managed to squeeze in a Gigabyte Gaming OC RX 6650 XT, and this will be an enormous upgrade compared to our $500 build 6500 XT. The 6650 XT at $270 is just screaming price to performance. It actually did go a little bit cheaper on Black Friday, but again, I didn't want to include that pricing for our December build guides. A 6650 XT and a $750 build is just insane. That 12400F and 6650 XT combo are going to get some serious FPS numbers, and this is as good of price to performance as it gets right now. Not to throw some shade specifically on anybody, but there's been a lot of really bad YouTuber build guides on the platform lately. This $750 build will honestly beat a lot of $1,000 builds from some other YouTubers, and honestly, it's going to beat it in both performance and aesthetics. Speaking of aesthetics, though, we got to keep that train rolling, of course, and to cool the 12400F, I went with the ID Cooling SE 214 XT, and you can tie in this RGB fan to match the pre-installed RGB fans inside our Montec Air 100, which is still one of the best micro ATX case options for those budget aesthetic builds. Finally, to tie in the whole white scheme to all together, we of course have some Asia Horse all-white cable extensions, and this build would honestly just look amazing with all of these included. Here's what the final parts list is looking like, and again, I actually managed to stay completely under the $750 target total, but that streak is going to end when we jump to the $1,000 build, so don't get too excited. For the $1,000 PC, I continue both our upgrade momentum as well as sticking with Intel. Here we have the 12600K, and this is a massive 10-core and 16-threaded beast with some serious performance. Again, I'm pairing it with the ASRock B660M Pro RS, which is still a budget option, mind you, but it allows us to spend more money on other components. Speaking of which, the SSD is still the crucial P3, but I did manage to get the one terabyte model in there, so we have some extra storage space. The power supply also got upgraded because we needed both more wattage and a better unit. For a $1,000 build, you really should be going with tier B or tier A model, in my opinion, and that's why I got this Fantex Amp 650, which is tier A and one of the best models at this $65 price point. For the CPU cooler, you gotta go with something a bit beefier, so I picked up the Thermaltake Peerless Assassin. This will be much better performance compared to something like the SE214 that was cooling our 12400F in the $750 build. And finally, the other thing that changed from the $750 build was the GPU, and here's the MSI Mech RX 6700 XT, which is obviously another upgrade from the 6650 XT. I'm not a huge fan of this price point at $390. It actually bumps up our total slightly above $1,000, but for what's available when I'm making this video, this is the best option. A 12600K and 6700 XT is now a very capable 1440p gaming PC, so the price to performance is just great, and since the RAM kit, case, and cable extensions all stay the same from the $750 build, this will look amazing as well. Here's the final parts list, and as you can see, our total goes a little over at $1,030, but honestly, I think that's realistically an acceptable spillover, especially for how nice this PC looks and how great it would perform. Now, I wanna hear from you guys before ending this video. Comment down below what you would do to change my PCs or what you would do to change them for our December build guides. Now, before you start throwing up your brain all over the keyboard, remember, if you're gonna make a suggestion on a different part to add or subtract or improve from my build guide, you also need to mention how that's going to affect the budget and where you're gonna take money elsewhere from. So many people out there love to suggest like, oh, you should have included an RTX 3070 instead of the 6700 XT. That's great, the 3070 is a better GPU, but where are you gonna get that money from? What other components are you gonna make cheaper? Make sure you include that in your comment. Anyways, I hope this video brought you some value. If you're trying to watch me personally build a $1,000 gaming PC, pretty similar 
similar to the one that I just talked about, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.